Okay, next we are going to see double core bud joint. Double cover bud joint. So this is a very, very important. Okay, so the double core bud joint. So first we will see the connection, how the connection is. So here the plate, this is the main plate. This main plate is connected by core plate on both side. Core plate on both side. So, okay. So this is the double cover bud joint. Okay. So this is the cover plate. This also a cover plate. And this one is the main plate. Okay. This one is main plate. Okay. Now see, this case, double core bud joint, there are two shear planes are there. This is one shear plane along this plane. The failure is happened, bolt gets failed, and along this plane also the bolt gets failed. Okay, now the characteristics of the double core bud joint that we are going to see. Okay, so what are the characteristics? The first one is the first one is it is the most efficient joint it is the most efficient it is the most efficient joint why because most efficient joint because the lines of action of lines of action of two forces are same lines of action of two forces are same and connection is symmetrical and connection is symmetrical with respect to with respect to x-axis okay so that so that resultant action and reaction passes through passes through the same way passes through the same way Okay, see here the bolt, the connection, the connection is symmetrical and the line of action of force also axial. Why the connection is symmetrical? Since the cover plate is lies on both the side of the main plate, so we are seeing the connection is symmetrical and the force also line of action. So therefore, this is the one of the most efficient joint. Okay, here there is no secondary stress which is comes and acting upon the bolt or a rivet okay so this is the reason we are saying double core bud joint is the most efficient joint and the next point is that we are going to see sum of core plate sum of thickness of cover plate greater than r is equal to thickness of main plate so that Thickness of main plate so that cover will not 
covers will not fail. Okay. So the sum of thickness of core plate greater than or is equal to thickness of main plate so that the cover will not fail. We have to always keep the thickness of core plate is greater than thickness of the main plate. Okay. Next one is next point is free body diagram. Free body diagram of bolt. The free body diagram of bolt is one. It can split into something like that. This is second one. And the third one. Okay, see, because of this force, because of this force, the the bearing stress will be acts here, this direction, and because of this force, here the bearing stress will act to this direction. Here the bearing stress will act this direction. Okay, now see, we are going to draw the free body diagram so this is the free body diagram so this is the force the bearing bearing force okay the small mistake actually this is that is this the bearing force direction that I have done is okay. Now you know the biggest of this force, this direction the bearing stress will be at and uh, and here the bearing stress will be act in this direction. Here the bearing stress will be also act in this direction. Okay, so this is the bearing force. And uh, this is the another bearing force on the cover plate. This is also another bearing force on the cover plate. Okay, then the shearing stress will be act here. This is the shearing stress, equal and opposite shearing stress. This is the shearing stress. Here equal and opposite is the shearing stress. Okay. Now here bolt R bolt R in double cover per joint are subjected to are subjected to double shear double shear and bearing and double bearing so it is subjected to double shear what is a double shear this is one shear the failure is happened in this plane this is one shear this is another shear Okay, but the bearing is only one bearing, sorry, and one bearing, and one bearing. Why one bearing? The direction, the direction of this bearing, the bearing force will be act on this, and bearing force which is acting on this element, both are the same direction. Therefore, we can take it as this is one, one bearing. This is the another bearing, okay, another direction of force. For design, we will take the maximum of these two. So that is our design. So that's why we are saying it is a subject to a single bearing, okay. So these are the, some of the characteristics of plate. So now we are going to see the design, the double core bed joint analysis, okay. Case A, entire plate consideration 
केस बी पर गेज लेंथ ओके स्ट्रेंथ पर स्ट्रेंथ पर गेज लेंथ सो वॉट एवर वी हैव डन इन द लैब जॉइंट एंड सिंगल कॉर बट जॉइंट द सेम थिंग विच वी आर गोइंग टू सी हियर ऑल्सो सो दो आर नॉट वॉचिंग द लैब जॉइंट एंड सिंगल कॉर बट जॉइंट प्लीज आई एम आस्किंग यू पीपल्स टू वॉच फर्स्ट टू दोज टू देन लिख दिस डबल कॉर बट जॉइंट बिकम्स ईसी अदरवाइज इट इज मे बी समॉट डिफिकल्ट ओके सो द बेसिक्स ऑफ दोज टू इज एसेंशियल टू अंडरस्टैंड द डबल कॉर बट जॉइंट ओके so first of all we have to draw a similar to lab joint and butt joint diagram okay so first we have to draw here also the diagram so the diagram is this is the double cover butt joint okay and there was a cover plate there was a cover plate okay there was a cover plate and you know bolt 1 2 and three let us consider the three bolt okay three bolt and here also we can take it as a three bolt 1 2 and 3 so there are three bolt that we have taken now there are Three port. Okay, so it is subjected to a force P. It is subjected to a force P. Okay. Hello. Ah, sir. Now, oh, come on. You are time. I am a class. It is time. One, one half hour. Can you see now? Okay. okay so this is the diagram now in plan if you draw this is the main plate okay this is the main plate p and this also p and this is the cover plate this is the cover plate and this also a cover plate so this is the center line that is the bifurcation of two main plate you know how many bolts are there one two three One, two, three. One, two, three. Similarly, here one, two, three. One, two, three. Let us take nine bolt. One, two, three. Okay. In the similar manner, we have to take strength per gauge length. Okay. So we have to take a diagram so this is the main plate and uh, 
this is also a main plate and this is the cover plate similar diagram that we are drawing okay the same diagram and this also a cover plate which is subjected to a force p this also subjected to a force p and this is having three bolts and this also having three bolt and three bolt this also having three bolt okay now if you draw the free body diagram of this in the plan view so this is the diagram in plan this is p this also p okay okay now this is the end point of cover plate so we can mention in this dotted line so this is the bifurcation point of two main plate and you know the bolt are there are three bolt one two three on one line another three on another line another three on last line so total nine one two three one two three one two three okay now let me take some of the sections so this section is is essential so this is section x x this is section one one let me take this is section one one and this is section two two let me take this is the section two two this is section two two understood this is section one one this is section two two this is section x in the similar manner so here actually this is the section one one right center of the board section three three means this one right section two two means this one section xx means this is the actual section axx in the similar manner this is the strength per gauge length therefore you have to only consider strength per gauge length strength per gauge length okay so this is the strength per gauge length strength per gauge length so this is the g strength per gauge length okay now here also we can say uh, cut the section xx this is section xx and uh, this point you have to cut to section 11 i will tell you why i am taking this sections 11 and 22 while analyzing you comes to know why we are taking this is section 11 so this also let me take this also section 11 similarly in the last you have to take section 22 section 22 and this also section 22 so section so this is all about diagram now we are going to see one by one the analysis a the first one a what is the first one shear strength 
shear strength of bolt that is p s p shear strength of bolt we can write shear strength of bolt is equal to number of bolt in the number of shear plane in the area of bolt pi by 4 into d square into permissible shear strength so this already we having seen now here what is again number of bolt in the connection how many number of bolts are there one two three four five six only nine here don't take the 18 only this nine will take care of the load so here number of bolt nine for that particular problem n is equal to what number of shear plane number of shear plane so which is equal to two here we can write number of bolt in a joint number of bolt in a joint so which is equal to nine so these two are over then what is fs so that we are going to write now fs fs equal to what we already we have written this 100 mpa 100 mpa or we can write this fs equal to fs equal to f u divided by root of 3 into 1.25 again limit state method this is in working stress method so that is the thing i hope you understood this is all about the shear strength in the similar manner we can write shear strength of bolt per gauge length PSP. Here, the same formula we will write, except here the everything is same. We can write per gauge length, right? Everything is same. But, but here n is equal to number of, except everything is same. But n is equal to what? n is equal to number of bolt in bolt per gauge per gauge length how many three see per gauge only three bolts are there don't consider the entire six this for a connection only three is there okay so three and n is equal to number of shear plane, same number of shear plane, so that is 2. And f s equal to same, okay, f s is same, and p s b, which is equal to n, 20 n in the pi by 4 in the d square in the f s, okay. So here I can write this f s is similar fs is same take it as here okay this is all about the shear strength now we are going to see bearing strength of bolt now we are going to see bearing strength of bolt bearing strength of bolt so this is a now b bearing strength of bolt that is p b b bearing strength of bolt here also we can take bearing strength of bolt P, B, B. So what is a bearing strength of bolt? Bearing strength of bolt the formula is P, B, B, which is equal to number of bolt in the bearing area in the bearing stress. Here also the same formula, number of bolt in the AB in the EFP. Here number of bolt is equal to, here what is n? n is the number of bolt. How much here? In the case is 9. 9 bolts are there. Okay. 
and a b which is equal to pi not not pi d into t okay and before that let me write fp fb is the bearing stress so fb is the bearing stress which is equal to same as in the last case of slab joint and bird joint the same value here also we are taking 2.5 into kb into fu divided by 1.25 this is in the limit state method and which is equal to 300 in working stress method so that is the thing okay so that's the thing now we can see what is a b a b is equal to d into t a b is equal to d b into t where t is the thickness of thickness of thinner plate okay where t is equal to thickness thickness of thinner main plate thickness of thinner main plate or thinner plate because why we are taking thinner plate because bolt in thinner thinner main plate gets out gets out shape first that gets out shape means the bolt in thinner plate which bolt is that means the bolt which is contact with the thinner plate getting change their shape that's why we are taking the thinner plate okay so this is all about the t now see now we are going to see about that uh, this ab means already we know right this is a projected area projected area so this is all about the bearing strength okay now everything is fine okay now the bearing strength of bolt here n is equal to 9 but here n is equal to only 3 why per gauge and how many bolts are there 1 2 3 okay in the bearing strength only n will be changed all others are same nothing to be changed therefore you can just copy this and paste it here the bearing strength of bolt okay and the next one is we are going to see tearing strength of bolt C is tearing strength of tearing strength of bolt. This also we can write this is a tearing strength of bolt that we are going to see now. Tearing strength of bolt. The tearing strength of bolt also we already seen in the lab joint. The same thing we are going to he use here also. Tearing strength of, sorry, this is not a bolt, plate, extremely sorry. This is plate, plate, P tearing strength of plate. Okay, now P T P which is equal to AG into FY divided by 1.1 or A net into 0 0.9 FU divided by 1.25. Okay. This is based on the gross yielding. This is based on the net yielding, whichever is minimum. Whichever is minimum whichever is minimum here ag means what cross area b into t what is a net b minus 
n1 into diameter of hole into thickness. In it is the area area at the section 1 1. But this is the area at the gross area. Okay. Area at the section xx. You can see. Gross area means this one. Area of plate. Without hole. The net area means area at the section 1 1. You have to subtract the hole. Bolt hole also. Okay. And here n1 is equal to what? Number of bolt hole <coughs> number of bolt hole into number of bolt hole into number of bolt hole in section one one okay so how much is this actually three the tearing strength of plate per gauge length concentration the same formula you can use here also there is no change okay there is no change so we are here we can write whichever is minimum whichever is minimum okay this one and this also come in the tearing strength of plate the same formula here you will get you you have to write but only one thing will change that is this n1 you know ag is same ag is same everything is same except in the a net which is equal to b minus n1 into diameter of hole right into thickness but here n1 only change n1 is equal to how much only one so now n a net becomes as b not b actually here gauge length Therefore, here G, so G minus diameter of hole into T. Why G? Yeah, the width of the plate that we are taking is per gauge length. Per gauge length, only one bolt hole always will be present. Therefore, N1 is equal to here 1. But here N1 is equal to 3 since we taken as an entire plate width. Okay. So, these are the important points. The tearing strength of plate, tearing strength of plate per gauge length. So, we are having same so next what will we do that is number of bolt calculation number of bolt or rivet which is equal to n n is equal to factored load divided by bolt value or uh, rivet value okay and here also this d is equal to number of bolt n so the same thing will come number of bolt is equal to the same formula here also come nothing to be changed that's why i'm just a copy here okay next one is a d what is a d efficiency efficiency of bolt not a bolt efficiency of joint efficiency of connection the efficiency of connection we yesterday we having seen this in an elaborate manner right efficiency of connection that is eta so eta is equal to least value of least value of PSB, PPB, PTP. The whole divided by strength of solid plate. Strength of solid plate in the front row. So generally I said the least value is you have to take the strength of the plate Y because 
the element failure is better than the connection failure. If the connection failure is, there is a bolt failure, is a connection failure. If the connection is failed or a bolt is, bolt is failed, then the end structure gets failed. But if the plate is failed, then only the element is failed. The plate itself failed, but the entire structure won't be failed. Therefore, you have to consider this one. Okay. So, efficiency is equal to here, you have to take A net into the stress divided by AG gross area into FT. So, into 100. So, A net is equal to how much? We can write A net is equal to A net value is equal to B minus N1 into diameter of hole net into thickness into F of T divided by B into T into F of T into 100. So if you simplify this, then you will get a B minus N1 into diameter of hole divided by B in the hundred. So this is the efficiency of the board. Okay. Now, this is not actually D, this is E. Now, E is equal to efficiency of connection per uh, gauge length. Efficiency of connection. Efficiency of connection that is eta. The similar formula we have to write here also. So copy this and paste it here. So then the second one is efficiency. This efficiency is equal to similar. A net into F of T. It will be A G into F of T into 100. Here A net is equal to what? Instead of B, your gauge length minus N1. Here, what is N1? N1 is equal to 3, right? Here, N1 in the diameter of hole. In the thickness, in the F of T, the, the hole divided by G in the thickness, in the F of T, in the 100. So, if you simplify this, this to it cancel N1 is equal to here minus diameter of hole divided by G into 100. So this is the formula. Since here N1 is equal to what? Only one. On per gauge length, you are having only one bolt, right? <coughs> At a section 1, 1, you are having only one bolt. Right? So that is about the efficiency. Okay? So we have done the efficiency. Now we are going to see what is arrangement. The extra is arrangement of Arrangement of bolt in double core bud joint. In double core bud joint. How we have to arrange? The first one is chain bolting. Chain bolting or we can say riveting. Chain bolting or riveting. So this is the first arrangement. In the meaning, here the bolts are arranged. In this fashion. Okay. <clears throat> here is the end of the core plate. Here also it is the end of the core plate. This is the bifurcation of two main plate. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three. And here one, two, three. One, two, three. This is a one, two, three. Okay. So this kind of arrangement is called as the chain bolting. But this chain bolting, it is the least efficient joint okay least efficient arrangement at the section one one this is the section one one in this what is a net 
again it is equal to b minus 3d into thickness okay so this is one of the uh, inefficient arrangement so that we are going to take some other efficient connection that is second one second one is diamond diamond arrangement diamond arrangement <coughs> here a net at is section 1 1 and a net at is section 3 3 also sorry 2 2 also the same a net at is section 1 1 3 bolts you need to subtract at a 3 also sorry at a 2 also there are 3 bolts there so you have to subtract the 3 so for 2 sections you are having 3 bolts you need to subtract but this is not an efficient one. Why? So let me explain that in the diamond arrangement. In the diamond arrangement. Why we are using this diamond arrangement? The reason is this. Listen carefully. I said, be careful with this diagram. I will explain this. Yes or no? Section 1, 1, section 2, 2. See, if you draw the free body diagram of section 1, 1, first of all. So, free body diagram of left of section 1 1. Left of section 1 1, you know, what is the free body diagram? This is the main plate. And this is the cover plate. This has a cover plate. Okay, that is a left of the free body diagram. Left of the section 1 1. This is the section 1 1. Left of the section 1 1 is what? Somewhere here, right? This is the point. So, therefore, at the left of the section 1 1, this entire P, which is taken by only this main plate, the load taken by core plate is 0, load taken by core plate is 0. Left of the bolt. Yes or no? I hope you understood. Right? So, therefore, the entire load at this section 1 1, the total load which is taken by the main plates itself at this section 1 1. Right? From this free body diagram, from this, from this free body diagram, we understood, we understood that entire applied load, entire applied load P is taken by main plate, P is taken by main plate. At one one. So critical section. So critical section for main plate is taken as taken at that is a critical section for main plate is taken at section 1 1 okay where where cross section area cross section area is minimum so we understood there are critical minimum okay minimum we understood at section 1 1 the entire load is taken by the main plate so that if you provide more coal on the first section then it is the it is easily going to fail so you have to reduce the bolt to coal in this first section so that the main plate will not be failed so that's why we are saying that section one known is the critical for main plate okay so that is important now next one is 
if we consider the free body diagram of a right of section 2 2 you can see the diagram okay then you know how the diagram looks so this is the main plate and this is your core plate and this is also your core plate this is plate number one this is the plate number two sorry river bolt number two this is the bolt number three this is the bolt number three so this is the p the right of this right of this bolt there is no connection right in this this main plate and the next main plate there is no continuity right discontinuity therefore this entire p is taken by only the core plate p by 2 p by 2 okay so this is the section 3 3 okay so from this <coughs> so not section 3 3 right of this is uh, right of section 2 2 okay you have to refer this diagram right of section 2 2 right of section 2 2 means somewhere here you can take it as okay so we can write from above free body diagram we understood we understood the entire load applied Entire load applied is taken by is taken by cover plate only. Cover plate only. Taken by cover plate only. Therefore, therefore, critical section. Critical section for cover plate is at this section two two where where cross section area is kept as minimum as possible kept as minimum as possible here also area is kept as minimum as possible kept as minimum as possible so at the section one one main plate is critical at the section three three the core plate is critical so that's why we have to do the arrangement is a diamond arrangement see what is the meaning so let me let me elaborate on this so this is the plate main plate and uh, this is the main plate and this is the cover plate and this also a cover plate power plate so let us take a three bolt one and a two and a three and a here one and two and three okay three then there are two arrangement one is a chain arrangement if you take a chain arrangement if you take the chain arrangement
and diamond arrangement how the difference is let me elaborate let me elaborate the difference between these two so yes this this is the end of the core plate end of the core plate this is also the end of the core plate this is the end of the main plate <coughs> so this is the chain bolting this is chain bolting this is the diamond bolting diamond bolting why diamond bolting is we are doing see if you arrange this in the chain bolting one two three one two three one two three total nine here also three here also three here also three see in the diamond bolting what happened sorry in the chain bolting we know this section is critical first section is critical for main plate third the second section is critical for core plate so you understood these two sections are critical that means it is subjected to more force in that we subtracted more number of holes if you if you reduce the width of the if they reduce the width of the plate then the strength will be reduced okay we know more forces are subjecting this section 1 1 and section 2 2 then what we have to do we have to reduce the bolt hole that means you have to reduce the number of bolt in the section 1 1 and section 2 2 we need to reduce otherwise the failure will be happen this is two this is two father what we are doing we are going to arrange something like that nine bolt we need to put one bolt here two bolt here three bolt here and this and this this is the arrangement of bolt so this is the shape of diamond now so this is the shape of diamond right so this is the diamond arrangement okay so this is the diamond arrangement we can on minute let me draw diamond shape first of all then i can arrange the bolt okay this is the diamond arrangement one bolt here here one bolt here there are three bolt we can keep it as we are just arranging okay here we can take it as a two bolt here also we can take it as a two bolt total nine bolt is there now okay this nine bolt we have arranged in such a way that now see at the critical section one one only one bolt hole be detected therefore as compared to chain riveting chain bolting the diamond bolting is most efficient here yeah, the strength will be we are getting strength somewhat more than this kind of arrangement why here the a net is less as compared to here here a net is more okay why a net is more since only one bolt hole is subtracted in the similar manner in the last section only one bolt hole we subtracted therefore the strength is more right the same thing that we are going to do here also okay in the diamond bolting so the diamond arrangement is the most efficient arrangement that we have to keep in our mind okay this is one this is one one two three one two one two so this is the arrangement now this is the diamond arrangement okay 
Now this diamond arrangement is the most efficient arrangement for arranging the bolt. Okay. Now I can write some of the points. Diamond is diamond uh, riveting or in bracket bolting. Diamond riveting is more efficient. Is more efficient than chain riveting. Chain riveting, okay? Because only one bolt diameter is subtracted. Is subtracted from width B. Hence, PTP is more. Hence, PTB is more. Okay. So, this is all about that double core bed chart okay so we having seen the double core bed joint characteristics of double core bed joint then the analysis by considering the entire plate by considering for gauge length strength and we having seen each and everything okay then arrangement of bolt also we having seen the diamond riveting or bolting is more efficient than chain riveting. The reason is only one bolt is subtracted from width B at the critical section. I can write like that. At the, at the critical section so that PTP That is all about the double code mentioned. Okay.